Yeah. When you say lymphatic filariasis, it's a worm disease caused by Uchiria bancrofti and Dujia malari. But in West Africa or in Africa, uh, it is basically caused by Uchiria bancrofti. Professor Alexander Yaudebra is principal investigator of the filariasis project Ghana. It is found in Africa, Asia, and Pacific. And so far, it is estimated that about 140 million people are infected and about 1.2 billion people are you know, at risk. And in Ghana, for instance, it is found in uh, no other northern regions, the three northern regions, and it's also found in the western region, Isma East and Ahanta West District. The disease is marked by severe swelling in the arms, legs, breast in women, and genitals in men. And when we have the infection, it leads to what is called lymphedema, which could eventually lead to uh, elephantiasis of the leg or elephantiasis of the scrotum. The lymph system maintains the body's fluid balance and fires infection. Surprisingly, that is the abode of filaria, thread-like worms which cause lymphatic filariasis, globally called elephantiasis. Filaria has a pretty interesting lifetime. Mating between male and female worms produces thousands of young ones known as microfilaria. Mosquitoes are transmitting agents from person to person through bites. Mosquitoes stick up the worms which rest, develop, and subsequently are injected into human skin by the blood sucking insect. Professor Debre's counterpart in the filariasis project in Germany is Professor Akim Horaf. And then it takes like a year for this little tiny one to grow to a length of this. 30 centimeters is no exception. And uh, then these uh, adult worms, they uh, live for 10 years, 15 years. In 2015, Japanese biochemist Satoshi Omura and Irish-American biologist William Cecil Campbell were awarded with the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for the discovery of the drug Ivermectin. Ivermectin is for treating parasite infestations such as head lice, oncosarcosis or river blindness and lymphatic filariasis. Scientists for years have been using ivermectin to kill young parasites, but adults were unfazed. Ivermectin is a wonderful drug. Uh, it is used to kill the worm larvae and it can do that with just one single dose. But has no effect on the adult worms. So if you are infected, you have to remember to take ivermectin every year for about 10 years. After a series of research to find ways of breaking its shield, the scientists finally discovered filaria survived on another agent. So filaria was more like the two I see. The real commander known as Warbakia with strong mutual relationship with filaria remained elusive. Neither the worm nor the bacteria can live alone. They need each other and the uh, worm um, provides the bacteria with some metabolites, some amino acids, so that they can grow the bacteria. And the bacteria, in turn, provides the worm with some metabolites that they need for their baby worms and also for their ox oxygen consumption. The scientists found shooting with bacteria with antibiotics like doxycycline means filaria can't produce. Eventually, it dies. Simple. Perhaps the scientists took a lesson from the biblical book of Zachariah. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered. But that is not all to doxycycline. The scientists are using one stone to kill two bears. If you have elephantias or if your legs start developing and you go to the hospital, they tell that there is no drug. They only give you paracetamol and other painkillers. So we did genetic analysis and we saw at least we were able to identify markers which were responsible for the development of the infantiasis. And we saw that the same drug that we used to kill the adult worm can be used to reduce these biomarkers. So we tried, we did a clinical trial, we treated about 260 patients, we gave them this drug for six weeks, and two years after we saw that 
those with lower stage of elephantiasis, their legs, you know, inverted. But more importantly, um, for the patients, what troubles them most is not even the size of the leg, but periodic attacks that they get. When they get these attacks, they become very ready. They are not able to go to their farms or fishing. They become dependent. But when we gave them a drug, five years after when we went, some of them told us that for five years they have not experienced any attack. They are also improving on surveillance, so more cases can be detected and treated. The scientists are relying on the most formidable tool in the digital age, mobile phone. Dr. Linda Bachadebra is lead researcher. There's a system that um, the government is using, which is a mass drug administration process, whereby every year or biannually, people who are in communities that have the disease are treated. They are given some medication. And then when they are being treated, those who have scrotal swelling and limb swelling are also identified. I realized that when it happens like that, you are not able to get the real number of people who are infected. And so with the increasing usage of mobile technology, which almost everybody has now, we decided um, to go into their communities, introduce them to the use of mobile technology. Our first pilot work was done in four years ago with the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine. And then we um, trained the community health volunteers who distribute the drugs on how to use mobile phone text messaging to report cases that they identify within their communities. We got a good success. We got a lot of cases that are more than what they usually do. But what we realized was that volunteers who were illiterate could not report properly. So we, we partnered with our local based industry. And this is, is a group uh, which we call the, the Voto Mobile. Now they have changed their name, so they call themselves the, the Viamo. Okay. So they have a system that is web based, and so it gets connected to the local tele telecommunication networks through a series of virtual um, private networks so that it is able to transmit and receive information. And within that system, they have uh, an interactive voice response in there. So we collaborated with them and we were able to provide some form of algorithm with regards to identification of the various cases. When we compare within that same year with the number of cases that were identified by the routine system in the Ghana Health Service, we had a lot more cases than what had been previously um, reported. The Filariasis Research Collaboration is in its 20th year, and scientists look forward to more improvement. The project has received funding from the European Development Countries Clinical Trials Partnership to test the efficacy of some anti-war backyard drugs for one or two weeks. We will try to uh, develop new drugs that may do the job that doxycycline does wonderfully in a shorter time frame. For doxycycline you still need to treat four to five, five weeks and if we could shorten that to say one week or two weeks it would be much more beneficial because you could give the treatment to more people because it doesn't last that long. Professor Richard Odame Phillips is director of the Kumasa Center for Collaborative Research. I, we are looking at a multidisciplinary approach rather than just looking at one aspect of these diseases. And you hear the word neglected. Neglected meaning that there, there's very little in terms of funding. It's a poverty-related disease and um, still a lot has to be done. For Joy News, Kwesi Debra, Kumasi.